I'm Jennifer Hunter Jones. I'm an artist and I have a gallery that is called Glimpses of Glory Studio. I started it back in the early 2000s and um, it's pretty much changed my life. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, a grandmom, otherwise known as Gigi. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, and I'm an artist. I'm a Christian that believes that life is more than just the 80 or 90 years that we walk on this earth and breathe in this air. I believe that everything that we do changes the atmosphere in the places that we step. I want to live a life that connects to other people. Because I know every time I connect to another person, my circles have expanded. And the adventures that they can bring into my life excites my heart. Each one of those connections, each one of those relationships expands my capacity to love somebody else more, to understand their heart a little bit more. Artist, we are unique creatures. We are life givers. We get to bring a different lens into other people's worlds so they can see things just a little differently from a different angle. As artists, we get to tap into inspiration and we create tangible pieces of art that draw our viewers into the very thing that we've created and they get to begin to, to experience what inspired our hearts. I'm fascinated by color and the movement of light. I love laying on a, on a pallet out in the grass and looking up at the sky and watching the clouds move across the sky and um, see all of the different shapes that are there and then to be able to, to catch the light at, at, at sunrise or to catch the light at sunset. And I love the light that comes right after a rain and the colors that are in the atmosphere and the, the, the colors that are in the grass and in the flowers. It just makes my heart feel alive. I'm a lover of the one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who fascinates me and causes me to ask a lot of questions. And after I ask the questions, I watch and I listen for the response because I know that my God engages with my heart. It fascinates me that um, I'm created in his image. That's a crazy thought to think about, that I'm created in the same image as the God who created the earth. That kind of blows your mind. When I begin to search out who I am and what my passions are about, it draws me back to that question and that statement that I'm created in God's image. I begin to question who he is as I question who I am. What comes out of that is an ever ending expansion of, of, of questions and answers and, and dialogue that brings my heart into a deep place that causes my heart to thrive and come alive. My heart wakes up as I step in to these questioning times. I question and then as he begins to release a response, it's like a part of my heart wakes up and it needs to find expression. That's when I pull out a canvas and I begin to create. question that, that will ponder in my heart whenever I'm in one of those low times which everybody goes through and you begin to wonder what am I created to do and, and what is my value and a question that, that, that 
that resonates in me is why do I do what I do when I do what I do? I do what I do because it awakens my heart to ponder those questions and to create out of that place. I do what I do because it fascinates me to walk outside and see the intricate detail of a flower or the incredible colors that are coming through sunset. I do what I do because it fascinates me to open up the Word of God and to begin to ask Him why He wrote that the way He did. I begin to ask Him about, about His attributes. I begin to search out who He is. And that's what lands on the canvas. One of my favorite verses is that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out. Searching it out can be uncomfortable, but it can be one of the most heart-awakening things that you can do. How do I do my paintings? How do my paintings happen? I can break it down into four, four steps. The first one is I begin to focus. I begin to focus my heart. I quiet my soul. And I open up the Word and I begin to read. And then suddenly it's like a passage will get highlighted. And I begin to, to, to ask Holy Spirit questions about what does that look like? Not just what is it you know, that can be answered in words, but I begin to ask, what does it look like? What color is it? What movement's in it? How do I express it? And I begin to focus in on that part. I begin to listen not just with my ears, but I begin to listen with the very core of who I am. I begin to listen for the response of God's heart to my heart. And then the third thing is I begin to, to discern what it is that I'm hearing, what it is that I'm seeing. That's when I pull out a sketch pad and, and, and watercolors and pencils and I begin to sketch just roughly the things that are stirring in my heart. I don't try to understand what's stirring in my heart with words. I've tried to, 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 to capture it on that piece of paper and I begin to explore it on that piece of paper. And then the fourth thing that I do is I respond. I respond to those things that I've been pondering on, those things that I've been focusing on, those things I've been listening for, and then I pull out a canvas. I take water, and the first thing I do is I wash the canvas because I, I want it to be a reflection of God's heart and not a reflection of my heart. And then I look at, at the things that, that I've written down in my journals and ask Holy Spirit for the first color. And I put my gloves on because I love painting with my hands. I pick up paint in my hands and then I begin to put it on the canvas. And after hours pass by because you lose track of time, you look up and I've begun to create on that canvas a tangible expression of what went on in that pondering time of just sitting with the Lord and asking him questions. Recently, I was asked to, to paint live during a freedom conference. It was a conference that it was at a, at a church and we were discussing different forms of, of freedom and very specifically was pointing at, uh, at healing in, the, in, this, in the conference. The canvas that I chose, I set it up and as the speaker was explaining to me the things that she was going to be talking about. Immediately, images began to come in my head, and I began to see this uh, brain. Well, I've never painted a brain before, and but I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that's what I, what I was supposed to paint on this particular day. So I did a little research. I was looking at different kinds, kinds of pictures of what the brain looked like. And then I began to ask the Lord for what medium I was supposed to use. And um, normally when I paint live, I use acrylic because it's just easy to travel with. This particular time, he had me bring my uh, cold wax oil painting materials. 
which is a much more complicated process and one that I would not normally have chosen to do in a public setting. But it was just very clear that this was the one I was supposed to use. I brought it, had my, uh, my little heat lamp with me so I could actually melt the cold wax in it, and I began to work. And what formed during that conference fascinated me. Because as I painted the brain and I began to put just different circles and shapes inside that brain, it was like the Lord was talking to me about rewiring brains and bringing them into order where there'd been, there'd been just a, a, a unbalanced place in their brain. He began to show me this circle in the brain, which I found out later is the thalamus gland. And I feel like he was trying, he wanted to heal that particular gland and some of the people that were there that day. The other thing he began to show me were with the spine back here in the back and I began to sense that, uh, that there were probably some people in the room that had uh, bone spurs in their neck. And so as the piece was finished and we showed it to the congregation, there were probably between two and three hundred people there, we asked if anyone in that room was dealing with any of the things that were in that painting and about a third of the room stood up and we were able to pray for healing for those people. We had testimonies at the end, and I was humbled by what God had done through pain and through my hands. That's just a glimpse of why I love what I get to do, and I get to be an expression I hope this little window of time has given you a, a little more understanding of who I am, who Jennifer Hunter Jones is as an artist and where my inspiration comes from. If I can ever answer any question for you, don't hesitate to shoot me an email and I would love to, to interact with you. If you have interest in some of my work, I have my webpage and uh, I would love to, have, to send some of my, my prints your direction because I know wherever they hang, it changes the atmosphere. God bless you.